Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. Uh, a couple things I'll mention to you. First of all, I finally have the conference lineup for this fall. So those of you who regularly attend our conferences here in Columbus in November, I have posted the flyer with the speakers and uh, that sort of thing at wellnessforumhealth.com. You can go there and check it out. The other thing is I we are coming down to the last three weeks during which you can lock in your tuition rates if you are enrolling in professional development programs with us. Um, we haven't raised our tuition prices since um, 2009, kind of hard to believe, right? have no choice but to do it now. As everybody knows, price of everything is going up. We don't have much choice. So if you want to lock in those rates, because it's not a small amount of money, depending on the program you're enrolling in, you might want to set up a time to talk to me at pampopper at msn.com. You can email me, I'll set up a time and see if this is something that you want to do or not. I mean, you can do it anytime. We're not going anywhere. We've been in business for 27 years. We are going to be in business for at least another 27s. But um, if, uh, if tuition rates make a difference to you, this is the time to talk. All right, so I have an interesting topic that's going to take some time to explain today, but it's important really important. And it has to do with the gut microbiome and antibiotics. All right, so just a couple of statements to open up uh, our discussion here today. The gut microbiome influences either directly or indirectly almost all aspects of health. All right, so we talked about this last night during the nutrition and microbiome class, um, the importance of or the nutrition and immune function class, I'm sorry, uh, the importance of uh, taking care of that microbiome because of its influence on immune function. Second thing I wanna say, the development of antibiotics is indeed a great achievement in um, treatment for humans. I mean, millions of lives have been saved. We don't have people dying of bacterial infections the way we used to, so it's a good thing, but too much of a good thing. You know how that works out, right? I think everybody knows by now that antibiotics do have a negative effect on the microbiome. The question is how much, how bad, for how long, and then what do we do about it? Well, according to an article in The Lancet, um, antibiotic resistant microbes were responsible for over a million deaths in 2019 alone. So we know that one problem is the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria in response to the overuse of antibiotics. It's definitely a problem. And um, by the way, this starts early. The average child who graduates from high school or adolescent who graduates from high school has had about 18 different rounds of antibiotics during childhood. And that definitely is something we need to change. It's, it's a problem. Well, researchers have attempted to quantify the risks associated with antibiotic use and damage to the microbiome, like how many prescriptions does it take and just does one matter and all that sort of thing. But a confounding factor is often that people taking antibiotics have other health issues and either those issues or the drugs that they're taking for those health issues negatively impact the microbiome. So you have a difficulty sometimes figuring out what is actually antibiotic induced versus other damage being done. Well, in response to this issue, a research group decided to look at the effect of a very short-term course of antibiotics on healthy people. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm in great shape. I don't have any problems. So um, if I take an antibiotic regimen, just one, it won't hurt. But is that really true? Well, how the team did this, they enrolled 20 healthy volunteers, divided them into four groups. Each took a different antibiotic or one group took a combination of two of them for just five days. And the drugs were levofloxacin, azithromycin, cefpidoxime, and a combination of azithromycin and cefpidoxine, which is sometimes given to patients with community acquired pneumonia, even though it's usually viral and antibiotics can't possibly help. And that is one of the problems, by the way, is that antibiotics are often prescribed when the person doesn't have a confirmed bacterial infection, and that can be a problem. Well, fecal samples were acquired before and um, uh, were acquired and collected and analyzed before, during, and after the antibiotics course. The last sample was taken six months after the course. And then, um, so they looked at how the microbiome changed. Well, immediately after taking antibiotics, the number and diversity of bacteria decreased. For most of the volunteers, these things got better after a couple of months, but over time, the overall composition of the microbiome remained changed. In other words, 
Taking antibiotics, even if you're a healthy person and for a really short period of time, can result in a fundamental restructuring of the microbiome. In three of the healthy volunteers, and of course the definition of healthy can be a little dicey too, it means different things to different people, but in three of these people, the gut microbiome was especially perturbed. They continued to have reduced microbiome diversity even at the end of the six month period. And one of the researchers said, quote, their gut microbiome became more similar to that of an ICU patient than that of a healthy individual. She did, however, note that nobody had any symptoms. In other words, this definitely indicates a problem, but not necessarily one that you would be aware of until perhaps something else happened. Well, a researcher by the name of W. Yust Wierzienga, uh, I think that's how you pronounced it, an infectious disease specialist at the University of Amsterdam has also looked into this in, in terms of antibiotics and healthy people. In a 2018 study that he led, healthy volunteers who took a one-week course of broad-spectrum antibiotics experienced a drop in gut microbiome diversity and at the same time, an overgrowth in pathogens like Streptococcus. Now those bacteria, the pathogens decreased over time, but the participants microbiome composition remained different from how it was um, uh, for the entire duration of the study. And the follow-up here was up to 31 months after the subjects took antibiotics. So this research group that I'm telling you about, this recent study, it's not a one-off. This has been shown in previous studies too. In addition to changing the composition of the microbiome, antibiotics seem to increase the prevalence of resistance genes, which I mentioned before. That's why this antibiotic resistant bacteria thing is such a problem. In the study that I'm discussing here, for three out of the four antibiotics, all but levofloxacin, there were higher relative numbers of antibiotic resistance genes than the samples taken six months after treatment. And um, the authors call this antibiotic scarring. And what this means is that some bacteria disappear, uh, some overgrow, the balance is different. And what the person uh, ends up gaining is bacteria that are more resistant to antibiotics housed in the gut microbiome. Now this becomes a problem in several ways. Um, we now know, and I wanted to say this, I guess, before I make the statement, these bacteria, they're, they're single cell creatures, but they are, they're very, very bright, all right? And they are intent on survival. And we know that gut bacteria and pathogens mingle in the exchange genes, which means resistant gene, resistance genes can be transferred from one bacteria to the other, causing pathogens to gain resistance. They mutate to survive, in other words, just like far more complex creatures do. A recent study showed that these resistant bacteria can even degrade antibiotics in the gut, protecting the pathogens from the effects of the drugs. So um, all good things to consider when you look at taking antibiotics, all right? So there's a lot of variation in people and how they respond to taking antibiotics. Some people are clearly more affected than others. For example, um, we notice that some people take the first antibiotic they've ever taken in their life, and within a day, they start to have diarrhea and gastrointestinal symptoms. And some people take antibiotics twice a year and don't really notice any problem, although these, this research that I'm reporting to you here shows that something is definitely going on that uh, you may not be aware of, but it isn't so good for you. Um, the three volunteers whose gut microbiomes were referred to as looking um, like ICU patients, it was noted that they had less diversity, um, less species diversity at the start of the research study. So the researchers hypothesized maybe they have taken antibiotics previously. They didn't ask about that. They just appear to be healthy people at the time. Another thing is they could have taken other drugs like um, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories that negatively affect the microbiome, or even their diet may have had uh, an impact. Which brings me to what the bottom line advice is that I have for you in response to all of this. So the first thing is probably pretty easy to understand. Only take antibiotics when you absolutely need them. You don't have any other choice. And when, when you really need them, they're, they're good to have. And the fact that you can develop antibiotic resistance um, uh, by taking too many antibiotics is a good reason to be very cautious about taking them. One personal thing that I'll share with you is that um, many, many years ago, I want to say it was like th 35 or 40 years ago, I was bitten by a cat 
And uh, cats have really virulent spit. And um, within a short period of time, my ankles swelled up to bigger than my thigh. I could feel my body like catching fire. I got to the urgent care center. I drove myself there. And um, fortunately it was my left, not right leg, so I could drive. And uh, the doctor gave me a, I took the first antibiotic in the office and said, it's really good that you came right over here because this could have really been disastrous. So good to not be antibiotic resistant if something like that happens to you. Um, and just keep in mind that they're overprescribed. People take them, as I mentioned before, for viral infections. They take them, they're given uh, antibiotics or prescribed by dentists who, I think are prescribing way too many antibiotics for having your teeth cleaned or to prevent infection, even as a prophylactic, not a good idea. Um, often given to little kids who have ear infections and the studies are really clear on this that a lot of times these just resolve on their own. So caution when looking at whether or not to take an antibiotic. Stop eating antibiotics in food. People often don't realize that uh, two, three quarters of the antibiotics manufactured in westernized countries and like the United States, they're being given to farm animals in their feed to prevent infection because some of these animals are raised in close quarters, as you know, and also to uh, promote growth um, for reasons that are still not clearly understood. Antibiotics are growth promote, promoters in farm animals. So um, there's no, uh, the, the FDA used to say there wasn't any residue in the food and they just kind of denied this for a long time and then it became so well known there was no way around it. So if you still continue to eat animal foods, make sure they're organic or wild caught. Uh, so that you're not eating, um, literally eating antibiotic in your meal, right? Uh, stop taking other drugs that damage the microbiome. A good example of a drug that's overused is NSAIDs. I mean, you know, if you have a headache a couple times a year, you're certainly not going to damage yourself a whole lot by taking uh, a couple of um, uh, something to ease the pain. But People take these all the time and they're even advertised for daily use. Like if you have knee pain or whatever, instead of fixing the problem, just kill the pain with drugs and keep marching on, bad plan, right? And then this is what I was alluding to before with diet having an influence. Um, your uh, beneficial bacteria in your gut, they like carbohydrate and they like fiber. And, um, and so when you eat plant foods, you're feeding the beneficial guys, the ones that are working for you. Your pathogenic bacteria love processed food and fat, and animal food, and protein. So when you eat a diet high in animal food and junk food, you are feeding the pathogens. And so if you wanna have a healthy microbiome, you have to provide the right food. Just like if you wanna have a healthy body, you have to eat the right food. Well, that also goes to your gut as well. So all things considered, um, you know, your microbiome, we need to recognize the importance of it. And we also need to be much more cautious about antibiotics. Um, they're good for what they're good for. Like I said, I was very happy to have one uh, back uh, 30 years ago or whenever it was that this happened to me. I probably wouldn't be here talking to you today if I hadn't taken an antibiotic at the time. But I, that's the only one I've taken in 30 some years. And unless I was near death or a threat of death again, not gonna take another one, right? So hope you find that helpful. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.